All right. Hello. It's Friday, and this is the last chance uh, review before the test. So I'm just going to go over a few things and also tell you how do you memorize the unit circle. Yeah, I haven't memorized. Well, sort of, but I could write the whole thing from memory. And how do I do that? I'm going to show you. Let's just throw up a few review questions here. All right, so one of the most common questions is go from degrees to radians. So once again, you, if I gave you some angle like 120 degrees and you're supposed to get radians, that little conversion unit was pi is the same as 180, right? So which one do you do? Let's see, uh, well, the degrees is on top, so let's put the degrees on the bottom and the pi on the top. I put the degrees on the bottom because isn't that what I'm trying to cancel? So this is gonna give me the other answer. So I gotta go, let's see, okay, uh, could I reduce this? Let's see, well, the zeros would cancel. Uh, six can go into that twice. Six can go into that three times. So I have two thirds of pi, or as we like to write it, two pi over three. Of course, I could have just found that one, 120 degrees. I could have just found it on my little sheet, but if I didn't have my sheet, I could convert it like that. And, it doesn't matter if I give you a weird one, like five degrees, still I'll do the same thing. Okay, let's see, pi over 180. And hmm, five goes in there once, five goes there, hmm, I'm not sure. I'll get a calculator. How many times does five go into 180? I put it in there and that's 36. So my answer is pi over 36. Yeah, five degrees, that's not much, right? That's 1 36th of pi. So that's degrees to radians. And likewise, if you wanted to go backwards, let's take that right there. And say so if I gave you something like, uh, I don't know, how about three pi over four? And I wanna go backwards. Let's see, let's times it by the same thing, but uh, let's put the pi on the bottom and the 180 on top because don't you want the pi's to cancel? Oh yeah, okay. And then see, I have three times 180 over four. Maybe I, I could just multiply that on my calculator right now, divide by four, or I could try reducing. I go, okay, let's see. Um, hmm, what can I come up with? Well, four goes in there once, four goes in there, and I'll take a calculator and go, it's 180 divided by four. My calculator says 45. So now I got three times 45, so that must be 135 degrees. Ah, so three fourths of pi is 135 degrees. Of course, I kind of knew that because I could, once again, I could just pull up this, right? I could kind of go, oh yeah, three fourths of pi is 135 degrees. Yeah, okay. So you could work all the way around. And let's do one other thing. And remember when we're doing the X and Y coordinates and there's a bunch already done. These are the most popular ones. I don't know if you notice a pattern. So I remember cosine is X, okay? Cosine is X. And when you're over here, you know, if you had like your little ruler, you're, you're at one comma zero, right? And as this goes up, 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 you know, you've gone up, but the X is still pretty big. This is the square root of three over two, believe it or not. You can do the Pythagorean theorem. Remember like 30, 60, 90s and special triangles? You could do that and come up with that, but let's not do that. This next one is radical two over two. This is one over two. And then here, the X value is zero. And as I go over here, do you notice these kind of numbers? There's kind of a pattern here. Let's define the X's. Oh yeah, these are the same, these are the same. One half, negative a half, they're just negative. So here's how I memorize that. Okay, so here's my wheel. In fact, how did I draw that? If you had to even draw one from scratch, I would just kind of like make a, make a circle. There's a circle and kind of go, let's see, let's make it like a, let's go like this and go like this and let's make it like a clock. So we need uh, one, to divide it into three parts, and same with the other part, divide into three parts. So there's my parts, and then uh, if I want to figure out the outside pieces, remember if I want to figure out the inside pieces, let me put in the 45s. 
They're right in between. And so now I got to come up with all the pieces. So let's go to a nicer drawn one. Here's one. So I know this is one comma zero, right? And up here is zero one. And here's how I can come up with these little guys out here. I kind of go, well, I'm pretty far over. So let's count backwards. Radical three, radical two, radical one, radical zero. <laughs> well, the square root of zero is zero, right? You notice that? And then you just put a two underneath each of these, over two, over two, over two. And that's the pattern, because you go in three, two, one, till you get back to zero. Of course, the square root of zero is zero. And then as you get to the other side, you're just gonna take these guys and mirror image them. So you're over here, you're gonna go, let's see, square root of one. Of course, these are the X's. Let me make a little more room here. I need the parentheses. Square root of one, square root of two, square root of three. And you know what, this is the square root of four. You go, well, square root of four? Yeah, this is the square root of four. It is? Well, over two, right? They're all over two. What is the square root of four? Two, what's two over two? One. Oh, so same over here. Put everybody over two, over two, over two, over two. And then of course you could reduce this to two over two, which is one. Oh, that's one zero. But wait a minute, isn't that negative? Oh yeah, you're negative, you're negative, you're negative, you're negative. Because over here is where X is negative. And you could do all those. Well, the, the, the Y coordinates do the exact opposite. You're up a little bit, right? First of all, you're up zero, then you're up one. Then you're up two. Now you're even higher, you're up three. And now you're all the way up to four. Of course, what are they? Square root of one, square root of two, square root of three, square root of four. And they all have, this is a square root of zero. And they all have a two on the bottom. And of course that reduces the one. And it's just a mirror image. I'm still up three. I'm only up two. I'm only up one. And now I'm up zero. And of course you put all the fractions underneath. So there is a pattern to go all the way around. And I noticed that the X's are always positive over here and here. Isn't this where all the X's are positive? So the cosines are positive. Over here, all the X's are negative, right? All those X's are negative. Well, for the Y's, the Y's are positive when they're up top. Those are the Y's, see? And down here, the Y's are negative, okay? So that's how I kind of figure out the pattern, but I just then just figure all the numbers. Let's see, the height is zero, then one, then two, then three, then four, then back to three, like in the Ferris wheel, right? You go up, then back down. And now you're down one, down two, down three, down four, down three, down two, down one, and, and back to zero. And then what you do, everybody gets a two underneath, right? All the way around. And everybody gets a square root, right? Square root, square root, square root, square root, square root, square root. And that's how I can actually fill the wheel in. So that's just for people that want to know that. And normally, we actually give you a quiz on that. I would give you a blank sheet and make you fill it all in. But I'll go back to the uh, video here, or not the video, the screen here. But you can see the pattern. So if you just covered up the these guys. So your height is zero, you're at one, you're at two, you're up higher, you're at three, that's square root of four over two, and they all have twos. And so you notice these are all positive. In fact, all the cosines over here, the cosines on this side are always positive. Well, on this side, the cosines, that's the X, are always negative. I'll zoom out a little bit there. The cosines are negative, because that's the X's. The X's are negative. The X's are positive, while the Y above is positive, so the Y's are positive. Well, when you're below, the Y's are negative. In section four, you're gonna get really more into this, all that positives and negatives. And nobody other bothers to measure, me memorize the tangents. If you need them, you just put the Y over the X. And here's a little word problem. Let's say you're like at Disneyland and you're on the teacup ride. Okay, you're on the teacup ride and they're spinning at 20 revolutions per minute. So you're in one of these like little cups. Okay, it has a little handle on it. And you're sitting in here. There you are sitting in there. Terrified, right? Ah! And because this thing's going woo, 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 around and around and around. So you're going around and around and around. And if you're spinning around 20 times every minute, and you're seated three feet from the center, how fast 
is your terrified face. Ah, you know, you're just really terrified. Help! Ah, you see, you're such a mess because you're so scared as, and you're getting sick. So as you're spinning around, how fast are you going? Well, let's see. Uh, let's figure out how fast, let's see how far you're going to travel here. You're going to go all the way around. So the circumference is 2 pi r, that's a trip around. So the circumference is 2 pi times, uh, what's the radius? You're three feet from the center. So like there's the middle, you're three feet away. So put a three there. So all the way around is six times pi. Uh, what are we doing? Feet, okay. Feet, right? So a trip all the way around, one spin, you travel six times pi. And if you're going, what is that on a calculator? I want to multiply it out. And I use the pi button because it's more accurate than rounding it off to um, 3.14. So here's my little camera. Okay. So I'm going to go, uh, what do we say? Six times times pi. And so I will use the little pi button because it's more accurate than 3.14. So there's 18.84. Now I could put it as a decimal or I could just leave it. So let's go back to our screen here. Maybe I'm just going to leave it for now six pi feet, but I could also multiply it out and say, but I'm not done with the question. I'm not done. 18.81 feet. Okay, so that's how far it is around, right? Well, wait, did you go around just once? That's once around. Okay, so once around is six pi, or once around is 18.81 feet. How many times did you go around? So if it's, if it's, 18 feet, trying to get the bigger marker there. 18.81 feet all the way around. It, you went around 20 times, didn't you? Oh my God. So we're going to take six pi, or you can use the 18.1, and we're going to go around 20 times. So that's 120 times pi, or you could do uh, 20 times 18.81. We'll move that down a little. If you If you did it with this number, you could do 20 times 18.81. So either one of these answers is right. 120 pi feet or 20 times 18.81. So I'm gonna see what that is. And that's 376.99 feet in a minute. So you're traveling 370, that's more than a football field in a minute. Of course, that's an entire minute. Of course, you're spinning in a circle. Okay, so that's that question. I'll switch back here. Okay, so once again, I'll get that all cleared out. So when I see these, I just figure out how far is it around the circle? <laughs> and how many times did you go around? Okay, if we change this question to, what if you didn't do 20 revolutions per minute? What if you did half of a revolution? Okay, so we'll do the same thing. Or what if you only did, let's make it more complicated. What if you did 45 degrees? 45 degrees, well, let's see, 45 degrees. That's just a little bit, right? How much of a circle is 45 degrees? How many 45s go into 360? You might say, well, 45, well, 360 over 45 is, uh, that's eight. That's an eighth of a circle, isn't it? So you can do the same thing, go, okay, two pi r, two pi, uh, three feet. Okay, so all the way around is six pi feet, right? All the way around six pi feet. But are you gonna go all the way around? No, no, we're not going to go all the way around. We're only going to go 45 degrees. So instead of multiplying it by 20 times, let's say you go, you go just a little bit of a spin. You're like, I want off. Get me off of this thing. Let's just divide it by an eight because you're only going an eighth of a spin. And so you could put that in your calculator and go six times pi, whatever that is, divided by eight. And you only travel 2.35 feet and you're like, let me off, right? I want off of this thing. Yeah, so that's the same idea. You could have also did this problem by doing that arc trick. Okay, let's put this back at 45 degrees. The arc trick, yeah, S is like a piece of a circle. Radius is three. The angle, oh man, we got to put in a pi over four if you want to do it this way, and you get three pi over four. That's, that's the same thing we just had. That's, if I multiply that and divide by four, that's 2.35 feet, okay? Yeah, so it works either way. Some people are like, well, this is easier, right? Some people like that. 
but I usually just do the circumference because it makes more sense to me. Okay, so that's our, our little mini review. I mean, you can go watch the other four videos from the week. So that's just a little crash course from the review. So make sure you have your quiz done, your test done, and any homework. And that's it. See ya.